well as Stewball, the blind racehorse, who was matched against two of the fastest thoroughbred racehorses in Europe. It's a 30-minute storytelling CD with sound effects. In fact, with the life and legend of Robert Johnson, he processed my voice, so when you hear the devil speaking, that's actually my voice. <laughs> And um, it, it, it was released in time for the 100th tribute, and um, I was glad to be able to pass one on to Steve Johnson, his grandson. There's a band called Robert Johnson's Grandsons that's in Mississippi, and most of his grandsons are about my age, and so it's really been wonderful for them. I'm going to take a, maybe a two or three minute excerpt from, uh, from the CD. The storytelling CD. I'm gonna fast forward. What really happened at the crossroads? Let me take my glasses off so you can see my eyes. What really happened at the crossroads? We're gonna pick it up right there and here's just a snippet. It was one bright early sunny afternoon with guitar in hand that Robert Johnson showed up at a crossroad. At where Highway 49W and Highway 61 come together. And he stood next to an old rotted out tree that had hate markings in the bark. He tuned his guitar to open D and he began to play his guitar just as he had been instructed by the Hoodoo Snake Doctor. An hour passed and there was Robert Johnson with his chin resting on his collarbone as he continued to play. And then the wind began to blow. And then dark clouds began to roll in and a fog mist filled the air with a musty stench. It became so cold outside that Robert Johnson could see his breath. The wind was now howling loudly, so much so that Nervousness swept over Robert Johnson, and he was, could hardly play his guitar. Afraid to look up, he just stood there motionless. And then the wind began to blow Robert Johnson sideways, and he was now standing dead center of the crossroads. You know, they say when you're standing at a crossroad, you're not traveling north, south, east, or west, and you must make a decision. And it's here where Robert Johnson felt this hard, cold, steel-like hand grip his shoulder and it spun him around. When Robert Johnson looked up, there he was. Satan, the devil, Beelzebub, Mephistopheles, Lucifer, the old tempter, Forky Tail. Robert Johnson stared up at the devil and he managed to speak. He said, my name is Robert and the devil responded, Johnson. Robert Johnson swallowed, his chest quaked, and he managed to speak again. He said, I want to be known as one of the greatest guitar players that ever lived. I want fame and fortune, and I'm willing to do anything to get it. He reached into his pocket, he pulled out his green folding money, and it caught on fire. And then Robert Johnson said, and in return, you can have my soul. Because Robert Johnson had often thought about such matters. What difference does it make who gets my soul when I'm finished with it? I didn't ask to be here no ways. Well, little did Robert Johnson know that he would receive fame and fortune, that he would be a seminal player in the development of blues music, but he would not live long enough to enjoy it. So there they stood at the crossroads, the devil and Robert Johnson frozen face to face. It was a photographer's dream. And then the devil reached out and down and he peeled Robert Johnson's guitar out of his arms and then he turned his back to Robert Johnson, a technique that Robert would use time and again, especially when he recorded. Then the devil retuned the guitar. We call it open D, open D tunings. And he played a little ditty. And without turning around, he slid the guitar back to Robert Johnson over his left shoulder. Robert Johnson reached up and he pulled down the guitar. The devil wheeled around. His eyes seemed to be on fire. His gaze burning deep into Robert Johnson's soul. And he said this, Guru Harakmen, 
Live fully while you may and reckon not the cost. Deny yourself nothing. Flame and blaze like a torch and toss it all about you. Make the most of what yet ye may have before you too shall descend into the bowels of hell. <laughs> well, this frightened Robert Johnson, and he fell down on his bended knees at, at the crossroads, and he asked the Lord to please help him. He began to remember the warnings of the hoodoo snake doctor. Be careful what you ask for, young man. Robert Johnson turned his head for a moment, a fleeting moment, and as a mysteriously as the devil had appeared, he had disappeared. And for the next eight years, Robert Johnson began to receive fame and fortune. Now let me fast forward a little bit more. After Robert Johnson's meeting with the devil, he never had any peace. The people who knew him, he was moody and sullen. His behavior became erratic. He'd get up in the morning and have spells, feel around for his shoes and go to walking. He'd have the walking blues. And sometimes when he got down in his whiskey, he would wonder, when will the devil call in his debt? When will the last fair deal go down? And you know what Robert Johnson said? He said if today was Christmas Eve and tomorrow was Christmas Day, that he would have no time to pass away. Gotta keep moving. Blues falling down just like hell. Blues falling down just like hell. I gotta keep moving, y'all. I just gotta keep on moving. Blues falling down just like hell.
can tell the wind is rising The leaves trembling on the tree I can tell the wind is rising